the Miami Heat are coming off of one of the most improbable finals runs we've ever seen where they went from the playing tournament as the eight seed having to scratch and claw against the Chicago Bulls to even secure the final playoff spot to immediately turning around and stunning the number one seeded Milwaukee Bucks and Giannis in just five games. They discarded of the New York Knicks in the second round in six games and then took down the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals in seven games, nearly choking a 3-0 series lead on the way, but we're not going to get into that in today's video before they eventually fell to Nikola Jokic and the eventual champion Denver Nuggets in the NBA Finals in June. Now, currently this season, the Miami Heat are sitting at 21-16 and 16 on the year, and they're amongst a mosh pit of five teams in the Eastern Conference with either 15 or 16 losses, where there's only one game separating the four seed from the eight seed. Now, a lot of you may be saying to yourselves, this is what we typically see from the Miami Heat. This is what we expect from them. They coast through the regular season. They're not going to push for a top seed. Jimmy isn't really big on caring about the regular season. They're all playing with a bigger goal in mind. They're waiting for the playoffs. And once the postseason gets here, Jimmy's going to turn it on. He's going to be the playoff riser that we know him to be. And they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs. And while I think all of this is still true, I do believe that this season's Miami Heat team are even more dangerous than their either two previous finals runs, again, in the bubble and last season. And I'm going to tell you why here in this video. Starting off with the fact that they are five games above 500, despite their three top scorers in Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Tyler Hero already missing a combined 41 games so far this season. And we're not even halfway through January yet. We have not consistently been able to see this Heat team at full strength, and they are still right in the thick of it in the Eastern Conference, which is a dangerous thought for a lot of teams out East. On top of this, Caleb Martin, who was a key piece to their playoff run last season and even had some fans claiming he may have deserved the Eastern Conference Finals MVP award after he averaged over 19 points and six rebounds in that series against Boston, including a 26-point double-double in their closeout Game 7. He has missed 16 games this season, and he hasn't played since Christmas Day due to an ankle injury that he sustained in that game against the 76ers. Now, in that game, the Heat won by six. There was no Jimmy Butler for Miami and no Joel Embiid for the 76ers. So who was able to step up and steal the show on Christmas Day? And that would be rookie Jaime Jaquez, who put up a career-high 31 points and 10 rebounds, shooting 73.3% from the field and going 8-for-8 eight eight from the free-throw line. And Hawkes's play has been a major reason why the Heat are within striking distance of the four seed in the Eastern Conference, despite the inconsistent lineups that Miami has had to put on the floor this season due to injury. In a year where the Rookie of the Year award is going to come down to a two-man race between Victor Wembanyama and Chet Holmgren, Jaime is really starting to separate himself as the next best rookie in this class, averaging nearly 14-4-3, while also shooting over 50% from the field. This early in his career, he's already shown great ability to be a creator, both for his own shots off the dribble as well as his teammates facilitating on driving kicks as well and playing as a connector in this Miami Heat offense. He's an above average floor spacer already um, as a rookie shooting over 36% from the three point line, which is only going to continue to get better, I imagine, um, as he grows into his role here for this team. He's a quality scorer out of the post with above average post moves and a nice post fadeaway as well. And he fits right in defensively on this Heat squad, giving great energy and effort on the defensive side of the ball and makes a real impact for this team. He fits right in with Heat culture. Now, his early impact has been both recognized and rewarded by head coach Eric Spolstra, who's put the ball in rookie Hawkes' hands and run sets for him and called his number down the stretch in clutch moments of games this year, and Jaime has already delivered multiple times for the Heat this season. And it's huge for them to get this kind of impact and output from a rookie who's already playing such a big role on this team that has big aspirations. Now, another reason why this Heat team is more dangerous than last season is because Duncan Robinson is also seeing a resurgence this year. After a really down year last season, Duncan is currently averaging career highs in points per game and assists per game, 
and is shooting 41.4% from the three-point line, which is good for sixth most among players with over 200 three-pointers attempted this season. He's also averaging 1.05 points per possession on pick and rolls this season as the ball handler. Now, Duncan Robinson is not known as being a guy who's an elite ball handler or even an elite pick and roll ball handler, but this stat is telling because he's tied with guys like Luka Doncic, James Harden, and Nikola Jokic for the same amount of points per possession on pick and rolls. Granted, He's clearly not doing it at the same level of frequency as those other players, but it goes to show you that he's provided a new wrinkle to his offensive game, particularly when that role man is Bam Adebayo, and it's provided a significant boost to this Heat offense. Coupled with this is Duncan's improved rim pressure this season, where he's already tripled his attempts in the paint from the previous season, and he's made a concerted effort to get downhill and either attempt to score for himself or create drive and kick opportunities to create open shots for his teammates. All again, going back to why he's averaging both career highs in points per game and assists per game as well. Now, when some of the Heat's big time scorers are playing, they are playing at an elite level. With Tyler Hero, he is averaging career highs in points per game and assists per game and is shooting over 42% from three on nearly eight attempts per game with a lot of those attempts coming in isolation situations and off the dribble situations as well. So has an extremely high percentage for some of the difficult shots that he is tasked with shooting in this offense. Additionally, Bam Adebayo has carried over that increased aggressiveness and offensive output that we saw from him in the postseason last year, where he is now averaging a career high, not in just points per game at 22, but also in shots per game, putting up 16 a night, which is, again, a career high for him. And with this increased offensive performance from Bam, he is still playing at the all-defensive, defensive player of the year caliber level on the other side of the floor that we've come to know from him. He's, again, one of the most versatile and switchable bigs that we have in the NBA today. Some would argue he may be the most versatile and switchable big in the NBA today. He is one of the most intelligent defenders that we have. He anchors this Miami Heat defense, and the stats back it up year in and year out. This season, he ranks in the 96th percentile in defensive estimated plus minus, and that is actually ahead of the current front runner for the Defensive Player of the Year award, Rudy Gobert. And on top of all of this, Miami Heat, who missed out on the Damian Lillard sweepstakes in the offseason, still have all of their assets that they laid out on the table in an attempt to trade for him. And the only one of those that I think is really untouchable at this point is Jaime Jaquez with how well he's performed early on in his career. They still have Kyle Lowry on an expiring deal. They have Tyler Hero, who's on a decent-sized contract all the way through the year 2027. Caleb Martin, Nikola Jovic, who still is a young player with a ton of promise. He's coming off of a great run at the FIBA World Cup this past summer. So a team may want to look to be able to capitalize on that and be able to give him opportunities to develop and see what he can become. And the Heat still have their 2024 first round pick and all of their first round picks between 2026 and 2030. With all of these assets, the Heat will have the opportunity to potentially beef up this roster, bring in a couple more role players to make a big impact, or have a chance to really kind of push their chips to the middle of the table and try to bring in a third star of some sort to be able to pair with Jimmy and Bam on this roster to finally see if they can get over the hump this year and hoist the Larry O'Brien trophy. So come April, we will see a Heat team with improved offensive production out of some of their most key role players, potentially improved depth or role players, or even a potential third star. They're going to be healthy and Jimmy and Bam are going to come ready to play in the playoffs as they always do. And with that, we know Jimmy Butler is one of the greatest playoff risers in recent NBA history. Some would argue he has a case to be one of the biggest playoff risers ever in NBA history. We see him drive up his intensity on both sides of the ball, the tough shot making, the clutch plays. He does everything for this Heat team. And I can guarantee you that a healthy Heat team with the improvements on the offensive side of the ball that we're seeing with the potential to make upgrades at the trade deadline that they have. That is a team that the Milwaukee Bucks, 
the Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics do not want to see in the playoffs. So while on paper, you may still say the Heat probably wouldn't be favored against any of the top three teams. And I'll be honest, I don't think Vegas would say that as well. They'll probably be underdogs if they played any of those teams in a seven game series. They weren't favored to win any of their series last season. And we all see how that turned out. Oh and the Miami Heat become the sixth in NBA history to win as an eighth seed in the first round. The Miami Heat has done it yet again. They are headed back to the Eastern Conference Finals. The Heat are going to the NBA Finals.